Okay, so today we are talking about the artist Van Gogh, and he actually is one of my favorite artists. I think he is my favorite artist. Um, the reason I like his artwork and his painting so much is because when I look at them, I really get a feeling inside of me. Like sometimes when I look at his artwork, I feel like really sad. I can kind of feel the sadness that maybe he felt, or sometimes I feel joy and I see the beauty in the world. And he was able to really capture feelings in his artwork and he did a really great job of that he did that several ways um and we kind of talked about a little bit how he had depression depression is just kind of very serious sadness and it can happen to anybody so it's really sad that that kind of happened to him in his life and he was not very famous or popular while he was alive which is too bad because his artwork is absolutely beautiful and now he's one of the most famous artists in the world and we can cherish and enjoy his paintings today i would like to share with you one of his paintings really quickly before we talk about the one that we're going to do this is not starry night this is a different one this is a picture of his bedroom and I'm gonna kind of hold up the camera here so you can take a look at it just a simple idea but you can see he used lots of little marks and lines to create the floor he didn't just paint it all one color I'm gonna kind of zoom in here you can see all those different brush strokes that he used in different places and especially in the window here I don't know if you can see that but look at the thick paint and how he applied little individual marks or strokes to create that. Isn't that beautiful? He did such a great job. The one that we're going to look at today, the masterpiece that we're going to be creating is we're going to create Starry Night. And I've already kind of showed you a little bit about that. But what we're going to do is we are just going to use crayons. And I want you to look how this looks almost exactly like his painting. Um, but it's not used with paint. He did use paint. But the reason that we're going to use crowns is because they're a little bit easier to use. Paint sometimes mixes. And he was really talented we are just gonna use crowns but I want to hold this up really close and we are just gonna make individual marks there's very few places where I make just kind of a solid where I color it in everywhere here all of this here it looks like a blue sky when I pull it back but when you look really close it's just made by lots of little marks and lines that follow a certain direction even this here it might look like it's all colored in but it was made by lots of little tiny marks I did kind of draw out a little bit of the town here and I'm going to show you how we're going to do this today. But when you're done, if you follow all my directions, you're going to have an artwork that looks like a masterpiece created by the artist Van Gogh. So here's how we're going to do it today. Okay, boys and girls. So this is the masterpiece that we are going to be trying to create, which means that we're going to copy this. And sometimes copying is a bad thing. We don't want to copy on our test at school, but artists copy each other to learn how to become better artists and to learn different techniques. So we're going to be copying his artwork today and some of his techniques. So the way that we're going to start this is we are going to take black and we're gonna create this bush right here and to me it almost kind of looks like fire the shape of the bush there's kind of some bumps in here and then it kind of waves up to the sky and it helps to kind of draw your eyes up through the painting and there's kind of one two three four stems here so what we're gonna do is on our paper in about the same place at the bottom of the paper about right here we're going to kind of draw that shape and you can click and seesaw on that and kind of get an idea of the shape okay so it kind of goes up like this and it doesn't have to be perfect we're just trying to copy the idea okay so there is my bush now I'm gonna do the outside and I know here it kind of looks like it's colored in but it's not it's actually created by lots of little marks and there is some green marks in here and there's some brown marks in here so with your crayons from your um, crown bag today or your art bag sorry you're gonna take some green and some brown and some black to kind of color this in, but we're not gonna color it in like we would normally color it in. We are gonna color it in by just making like little kind of marks in that space. And over on this side, there's some green, and over on this side, there's some green, but notice it's just little marks, okay? And I'm not stabbing my paper, I'm not making dots. That's a different kind of artwork. That's called pointillism, but we're not gonna do that today. We're doing impressionism where we're just using like 
little kind of lines almost to create our artwork. The rest of it here though, I'm gonna kind of fill it in and almost color it in, but I'm gonna color it in with little lines, okay? So see how I do this here? And I'm gonna totally fill in that space with my little marks. And I'm kind of taking them up the direction that my lines are going, okay? Like this. All right. And I'm going to completely fill in this spot. The next thing that we're going to do is we are going to add in the sky my favorite part of this artwork, which is this kind of swirly sky. It's almost like a wind or a swirl, okay? So I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. And this will kind of go behind our tree here, okay? So the next thing that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scoot these out of the way, I'll use those later. The next thing that I'm gonna do is really lightly with a blue, this is super light, this is just gonna kind of help guide my line. I'm gonna make this swirl, it goes up, then around and kind of curves like this, but then it kind of goes like this to the side, okay? And I need to leave some space down here, so I don't want to bring it all the way to the bottom. It's going to be kind of maybe about, it's going to start about here, and kind of swirl around and then back this way. And then I'm going to make some spots where I'm going to make my stars and my moon. So I'm just going to start with like a really light circle and a big circle or kind of a half circle here where my moon is going to be. And then I'm going to make some little places for my stars. And one of them is going to be over here on top of the swirl. And then most of the rest of them are kind of up in this space over here. Okay. And I'm just really lightly gonna do this because I'm actually, I don't wanna be able to see these lines. I'm gonna make little marks all the way around here. Then I need to draw down here at the bottom. There's this beautiful little town and then a little church. And then in the back, we've got these little mountains over here. And I'm gonna do this with a black, but again, I'm gonna do it really lightly. And I'm gonna start with this church. The church is kind of at the edge of the moon. So if the moon is about here, this is where my church is gonna be. And I've got the steeple of the church, okay? And it's like a little square here. And then I'm gonna draw the roof of my church, which is like a little rectangle. And I'm gonna draw my church there. And then I'm just gonna draw some little rectangles on the side, kind of for some rooftops. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We just want it to look like a little town over here, okay? Very pretty, all right? There's another roof over here, maybe a couple more. All right, and then in the background, I've got these kind of hills that go bump, bump, and then a big one here, and goes down, and then bump, like that. And then I've got a little bit of those hills back over here, okay? So I've kind of got the outline. Now, just like I did, with my bush, I'm gonna start to fill those in. And I'm gonna start with yellow first, and I'm gonna draw my moon. And it's not a full moon, but it's a crescent moon, which is kind of like a half moon. And I'm gonna draw that. And I'm gonna draw a little dot for my stars. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. And he did use white. We don't have a white crown that we're gonna use today, but we are gonna leave a little space around here to kind of show some of that white. But then the rest of this part is super fun. I just get to make these little lines to kind of bring your eyes around this spot. Like this, making lots of little marks around that circle. Okay, and I can even go in the circle a little bit if I want. Okay, and then around here with my blue. Now he used lots of different shades and tints of blue in his artwork, which is absolutely beautiful. And in our crayon bag, we don't have all of those gray colors. So on your tables today, I've laid out, or whoever's teaching today, has laid out different crayons. And you can use some of those to add to your artwork. Now they're mostly, we're gonna use our blue here but we're just gonna kind of follow that shape. Make sure your lines are curved in the direction that that outline is. So we kind of go around with our eyes like this. Make them little, we don't want giant marks, we just want little marks. 
okay kind of like this curved up here and then curved back around and then I'm gonna start to add some of those other colors that I get to use today maybe some lighter blues just a few okay and maybe some here and I'm gonna keep filling this in and I kind of want you to watch how I'm gonna do this I'm gonna speed it up a little bit piece. Notice that all of my little marks, I didn't color it in, even on the moon there. I didn't color it in. I made them out of lots of individual marks. I just kind of kept them close together so I didn't have so much white space. I do want to leave some white space kind of around the moon and the stars. He did use white when he painted, which is awesome. Um, we don't have that as an option, so we're just going to leave a little bit more space around there. I did use lots of little marks too. Like notice how little my marks are. They're really small. The only place where I used kind of long marks was in the mountain area or kind of the hills back in the back over here because they were a little bit longer in his artwork. I also went back with a black and kind of went over a little bit to kind of make your eye follow the direction that I want it to go. And I made sure that all of my lines were kind of rounded around those shapes. I didn't color it in straight. Notice that all my lines are kind of curved. They kind of curve around to bring your eye around those objects we want you to see. That's one great thing that Van Gogh did in his artwork. So when you're finished with us today, you're gonna put your name and class code on the back, okay? And then you're gonna take a picture of your artwork in Seesaw and send it to me.